Put. Okay, so I just realized that I haven't been talking this whole time. <laughs> so the concept here is that Emily is hosting a dinner party, and the only guests invited to this dinner party in her mind are, um, you know, spirits of truth. So we've got love and joy and patience and all of that, and. Um, so to show that they have their certain places at the table in perpetuity is my hope. Um, I want to basically have their names engraved on the seats. I also played around with the idea of place cards, but I thought that felt a little bit too interchangeable. So the idea is that they are still, you know, that they're always there. So, you know, we'd have love carved here. You know we'll figure out how to do it a little better <laughs> um, but as we go we'll just have each of our guests you know their name plate is here and we've got you know strength and dignity and all Proverbs 31 kind of stuff that I can fit on the chair um, but then to multiply this idea I like the idea of having um, a lot of flowers on the table. So of course we've got it set up for dinner. We're going to have candles because this is going to be like a very warm, lit kind of piece. Um, but we're going to have, you know, aside from everybody's dinner plate, and we can just go ahead and do that now, the dinner plates. Um, and then we'll have the settings, we'll have, you know, wine glasses and, oh goodness, and then once we've got that set up, and maybe we would also continue going this way and just keep having it go out so leave the frame instead of being cut off here so you'd kind of ignore these little corners here which I think I like I, I kind of like that idea to make it big like all of these things are welcome but at the same time I kind of feel like I should limit it to 
to just these few for right now because we want to concentrate on the main ones and we also want it to remain intimate. So that being said, let's just stick with these for right now. So um, we've got love, peace, strength, um, joy, right? And up here, we're going to have Emily um, and we will have her chair also decorated with different blooms um, which will kind of symbolize what we want to come around her but back here what I started to put was just um, a what's it called because <laughs> I literally just did all of my research oh gracious this is Arbor Vitae um, so, I mean, definitely sounds like life tree, um, but it's supposed to symbolize unchanging friendship. And the reason that I actually wanted to include these in here, while it would be so much easier to just focus on a table, for one, is of course, we have, um, in this composition choice, I'm going to leave the, the background so that we have this kind of openness to it. But these also, as they symbolize true and unchanging friendship, um, I both want this to symbolize Emily's friendship with the Lord, with the Holy Spirit, but also with herself. Um, to be consistently kind to yourself and know how the Lord sees you. And so I like that this will kind of hold that symbolism and it's going to flank both sides um, to basically symbolize like a protective friendship. I like that friendship is something that protects us. So when we move on, I've got to definitely keep in mind what all these different flowers symbolize. We're going to, um, you know, we'll have some that are coming out of vases and, you know, because they're, they're just going to lend themselves more to a vase. And then we'll have some that, you know, just come around and fill up the bottom here. Um, and then, you know, we can have more candles. And let's make sure to do some tall ones and some short ones. And you know, again, maybe we'll just follow in with the flowers. I'm not really sure which ones at this point. That's why we're being sketchy. Um, again, so like as things come closer to you, of course, you want to make sure that you're um, making them larger, which maybe totes obvious to you guys. And again, we've got candles. And these candles will be, you know, in their little puddles of wax as well. I think we're going to stay away from candle holders because I just think this is a much more romantic idea here. Alright, so this is kind of the loose idea. And again, we've got these, these plants, these flowers, however we're going to do it. Um, I am definitely seeing a lot of like purples and oranges and reds and just like warm, rich tones, but the purple being something that's deep and will push it back. Um, and the reds and the oranges and yellows being things that will pop out and give the glow. So that way, hopefully we have like two layers of depth there. So then the last couple of things I thought was number one, definitely like a string of lights here. I like that idea. Um, just because, I mean, yeah, it's a very <laughs> millennial thing to do, but it really does create such great atmosphere and it's a warm glow. And that's kind of what we're going for here is, you know, the warmth. So we've got a handful of different kind of flowers we've got. We've got bay leaves and daffodil and chamomile and, you know, just just all kinds of different ones that will, I think, capture the idea that we've got going on here. Um, but we've got to focus on what's going to go around Emily's chair. 
So I'm going to give her like the, you know, guest of honor kind of seat. But I'm not really sure how I want to do that. Um, okay, great. Alright, so we'll play around with chair designs a little bit more in a minute. But with her area here, I do want that to be um, covered a little bit in like an ivy. And that ivy will actually go around to the other chairs. So again, let's, <laughs> let's try and not make it look like it's a little animal. So a little bit of ivy on these. Um, and this just symbolizes friendship and continuity. So, but I'm not really sure if I like that. I think it might be a little bit rough. Um, I also like the idea though of, you know, the plants and all of that kind of coming out in between the, you know, the plates, of course, where we'll, we'll have, you know, the knives and forks as well. Knife and fork. And knife and pork. This stage is always you know, nice because you don't have to do as much design wise. I think we will try and fit in someone here, but since this is just a thumbnail, you know, I'm not going to redo all of it just to fit that in right now. But we'll we'll have that. Maybe we'll have even like, you know, on each plate, not to get too uber elaborate, but we could play with like, like napkins or even like a, a napkin and a flower. Nah, that's not going to work with the composition, I don't think. Okay. Um... Yeah, maybe napkins just to show, I mean, that and the clean plates, of course, but just to show that they have not begun their dinner feast yet, that like the table is set up and waiting for them. Um, then back here, I think it would be kind of fun to add a little lamp stand. So we've got like a little body here and then these come up. Right. Um, maybe even though, like, I could try and put one of those on the table. I feel like that would be a little too much going on on the table, though. There does need to be something over here, and I don't quite want to just double the lamp stand. I almost want to have a music stand. I like to have a song specific. And maybe, you know, stylistically, this isn't going to be her, her jam anyway. So. Uh, I think it's probably better than not at this point to keep things simple just float the idea over to my client and go from there. All right, so here's the thing with this. I am going to give everything a nice yellow wash underneath so that instead of white coming through at any point, a nice warm light will. That's kind of the idea. Um, also, my trick here that you see me doing is I'm just using regular scotch tape to tape my borders. Um, but what I do so that it doesn't rip my paper is I just stick it to my pants a few times. And that usually does the trick. So. 
Okay. So let's get on with it. So for any of you who are new to painting, specifically watercolor painting, one little tip is that you do always want to um, pre-wet your, your paints so that they are nice and ready to go by the time you are. It's not a huge deal if that's not the case, but you want to basically get the, the pigments uh, flowing and ready to move and all that. So I, of course, am being lazy and not cleaning my palette right now because this is just a thumbnail. I'm not like super anal about it, but all right. So I've got that color ready. The other thing though is while this paper can't handle like a crazy amount of water, I do want to go ahead and put some water on it to make the wash. And of course I've still got some of that paint in my brush, but that's a-okay because that's kind of what I'm going to lay down anyway. So again, because this is um, a mock-up phase, this is not really when I get into, you know, doing things as perfectly as I can. This is more when I'm just getting the ideas out for my client to see because I have found out that, um, you know, people have a hard time visualizing what they want. And that's really why they hire an artist in the first place, because if they could, you know, do things or explain it, they would, <laughs> they do it themselves. I don't know, obviously that comes down to skill as well. All right, so I'm gonna wash it a second time. My cleaner water, which I realize probably neither of those looks clean. To y'all. All right. So another little trick, very simple, is just, you know, blow dry it. So again here we're just going to continue on with like giving the gist of what's going on in the room. Um, so what I want to do for that, what I want to make sure that I do is simply get my, you know, my colors to their approximate, you know, place they're going to be. And with watercolor, you always work in layers, um, not necessarily like front to back or back to front, but more like you do your first layer of your whole painting and then do the first or the second layer of the whole painting. Um, and that way you're able to work in different places at different times, but you're also able to build up your layers. So for a thumbnail, I'm not going to be as concerned about, again, getting all the detail really precise. Um, I just want to get my general bits, you know, uh, looking like they're supposed to be looking. So I'm gonna start color mixing with a few few things. But I wanna basically make my my blue, which is this color. Um, I want to turn that, I added a little bit of violet and then a little bit of this um, burnt sienna, which brings it to a bit of a, of course, browner place. I'm so gonna have to clean this palette in a little bit. But see, it's a nice deep purple that kind of keeps the, the warmth that I would like to keep. So uh, a couple of things here. One is that when I go in, I'm not going to try to um, to get right up to the light bulbs. 
for one. Um, also, you're going to notice this paper is for sure buckling. Um, that's because it's not a super high quality paper. Um, and because again, I am just, okay. What I'm gonna do here is actually basically just like, The funny thing about um, doing thumbnails as well, though, is that the clients often you know, we'll still be like, oh my gosh, is that how it's gonna look? <laughs> or like, the worst thing is when it's a uh, portrait. So it still needs to be, I still need to do a thumbnail, but since portraits really do take a long time, I'm not going to um, take a super long time getting everything right. I'm just going to get the gist of their features. Or sometimes, for portrait thumbnails, I don't even like do features, period. And sometimes that can kind of freak them out. Like, are you gonna paint my face? And I'm like, obviously I'm gonna paint your face. Okay. So see how even there like it was so quick, but I was able to layer and just make that color pop. Bada bing. Okay. So notice that I did start with the background still. Um, but I'm just going to move on right now. I'm gonna wet this old part of my palette with green. Um, and we're going to add a little bit of like a nice emerald huntery kind of green and then a little bit of sap shadow like bottle brush there okay and this one again we're just gonna do as like a wash So in the true painting, this will have, basically you would go out with this green color and the closer you get to the lights, the more, um, like the lighter green it becomes, like they're shining on it. And like, I'm not going to just leave the whole section of the lights when it comes down to that. Same with the, the night is that it would have like, I would go towards the light and a gradient. So right now, I think we're going to do, what color cloth should we do? I feel like red's a little bit harsh. Let's just stick to like a nice brownish, tannish kind of color. Okay. 
<laughs> we'll have all kinds of like Actually, I'm just gonna, I think I'm just gonna wash over everything. Mm -hmm. All right, and we're going to warm that up a little bit for the chairs. So what I'm going to start on now is I'm going to ditch the big brush. He's done his job. Thank you, big brush. All right, and now I'm going to grab my smaller brush. Um, this is a Princeton six round. Rounds are really so much easier to work with um, a lot of the time when it comes down to like getting detail, getting any kind of precision just the bomb. The bomb.com, yay. All right, so um, what I'm going to start with is actually coming in with some shadow underneath the, the um, lights. We're gonna just get a little bit closer here. Because for this, it's actually going to be the negative space that makes the light, period. And this is where also having nicer paper would have been a, you know, a good move. But the gist, of course, is simply that we've got little LEDs up in the sky.
So we've got one plate here. We've got another plate here. give a little like hint of shadow on the other side. Alright, so here's where it's just going to get weird for a minute is I'm just going to basically wing it with some flowers. flowers coming out between the plates and then this one okay in front of Emily's spot but we don't want to make that too big because we don't want to like cover her whole area up but we do want to give some foliage right so I'm gonna go in with some, let's do some reds. Red, baby. Some orange, maybe. That yellow. Alright, so. Do some yellow bits here and there. Because when it comes down to it, we're going to um, pick our favorite um, yellow flowers to basically do all this up with. Our favorite flowers, period. Pulling some violets, which I've got to admit, purple is not my favorite color. Um, but of course, a little bit of purple flower. I think everybody can dig that. Alright, so let's do, you know, some of these are like laying down on the sides. And of course we're going to need white. Now since this thumbnail is watercolor, you know, white's fine, but it's not gonna stay opaque for very long. But I do like the way just the color looks in here. And I think we could really play that up on the sides as well with like some bigger white bouquets and maybe one in the front. Um, all right, cool. And then I'm going to make a little vase around this, you know, like, like it's been standing there the whole time. <laughs> So again, when we come back to, you know, working in watercolor, it's, I'm, what I'm doing is naturally very, you know, quick. This is to get the gist of an idea. This is not to exhaust an idea. Um, just see where the colors fall. See how you like it there. You know, even down to these guys we're going to they'll have shadow and um, we'll 
we'll see about coming back and playing with the lampstand idea, but right now let's just keep it open. Um, all right, I'm going to add a little bit of shadow to these chairs because I'm also going to come back into them with like a little jelly roll pen and roll up the ante there. All right, so now I've just got to give each of these spots its um, wine glitz. And I'm still not sure yet if I want to do the ivy, so we'll come back to that idea. But right now, I'm going to go. I think I'm actually going to go make lunch. Alrighty, guys. I am back with my teapot. <laughs> uh, not that you can see that anyway. Bubble. Okay. Alright, I'm back from lunch. Um, let's see how that light helps. That's good. Okay, so all of our colors are still fairly dull, but they've got that warm undertone, and that's really all we need for right now. Um, because once again, we're going to keep this thumbnail slash sample work simple. What we're going to need is a white jelly roll pen, and I'm just going to grab another black pen to do some line art. Um, I'm definitely between making it like straight line art or going really my favorite route and using a brush pen and doing you know nice more painterly kind of strokes so uh we'll see let's go with um let's go with a more rigid approach just to start but one of the reasons that i don't like to do this is it really wears on my hands because of how i Hold my pen and even if I try to hold my pen the other way it just doesn't end up working out for me usually. Um, so I'm just going to come in and you know highlight. You know I probably shouldn't have done black line art on the lights. Yikes. Oh, those were going down, weren't they? They definitely were. Alright, and then these are going up. Okay, great. So we've just got one extra <laughs> random line. Um, and let's just stay consistent with this. It is okay since these are, you know, glass bulbs. It's alright that they... Um, that you can see the line through them. And by the line, of course I mean, yikes. of course I mean um, the wire for the other lights. Yeah, we're just gonna keep it simple, not overthink this. Not my best. All right, great. And we're going to go, you know, these have kind of a, a bit of like spiky, but they're not, they're not super spiky. Just that I want to denote texture. Yeah.
kind of better to have a really miscellaneous texture than be just doing zigzags or whatever because it gives the the you know thought that like branches are popping out and stuff like that okay so here with the line art is where I'm going to focus on what's in front and work backwards because when we're dealing with solid objects um, we want to note that you can't see through them um, I also might have a couple of inconsistencies here when it comes to like the wine glasses I was thinking I might just use white um, line art but maybe since I did black for the bolds I'll stick with this so again remembering that it's a mock up it's just for now um, so let's not get too you know caught up in the details here so here I'm going to you know highlight my my different flowers maybe give them you know some loose whatever okay. right and then kind of the same thing around here right as we're going to do like some little white clusters and we've got oh, okay that one's popped out of the pot sure that we do some nice foliage around there and we're going to um, you know lead it down kind of like this like this reminds me the this reminds me of the animation style for books like um what was it Amelia Bedelia and like where it was just kind of a much messier world like flowers didn't have to be any one thing specific they were just the artist's hand you know brought them out I really liked that kind of messier style which to be fair I also liked very intricate you know planned out kind of things and <laughs> I just never had the patience to do them so I'm not gonna pull that you know like oh I'm messy because it's just what I like like it is but also I could be more disciplined and like my art just as much so we're just gonna pretend like this is what I've always wanted to do. Like, oh my gosh, I'm just a messy <laughs> artist. So the great thing about um, client commissions is how basically when you've done something for someone and they're happy with it, um, you definitely have a higher chance of a repeat commission, which of course is the case with, you know, any service really. But um, especially for something like this, I had a, you know, one client who, when her husband's dog passed, um, she commissioned me to do a pet portrait of their sweet little fur baby. And then when, um, you know, another loved ones lost their, their dog as well, you know, she thought of me and it's just one of those things that like, until you're actually there, you don't think about it. But, um, All right, so here's where we're going to get to be. Um,
right, so let's go ahead and kind of do that. So um, with the next ones, we're just going to keep it very simple. I don't really know why I'm doing it like this though. I'm going to go ahead and do the wine glasses. important thing to note here is that um, they will always be to the right of the plate. I don't know if anybody else out there has ever done catering, like at a wedding. But you always put the drink. I mean, really, you would have just had to set a table period to know this, but you always put the drink um, to the right of the plate. Oh my goodness gracious. Alright. These are very messy. That's okay. I don't think they need to be super, you know. So same thing with the knives, is they will always be on the right side because um, since the majority of people are right-handed, they will pick up their left fork and cut with their right. So let's leave it at that. I guess we can do some little napkins there, which I definitely forgot to paint still. Um, wine glasses also, we just show the bottom of them where the glass comes out. All right, and now we're going to do table and then we're going to do the last chairs. So I think the mistake that I made with a lot of these when starting out was that I wanted to cave them in when really I think if we're looking at them sitting, yeah, they need to be actually curved out and down. Okay. It doesn't need to be this drastic, but Again, we're just we're starting with something. All right. So here, we can get into actually designing the chair. <laughs> These are rough. Because I'm not planning them, I'm just going right in. really makes them feel a little more intricate. Okay. So here's where we go into, you know, picking the names and all that. So we'll just start here with
truth, joy, peace, love, alright, and now we can go around I'm going to do a little bit of this. He's a little far away from his plate. Alright. So, I think we can stop here for now because it gets um, the idea across like a hundred percent. So, I'm going to slowly remove my tape. Ugh, that's annoying. don't want to go overboard on the white because the light is still supposed to be the yellow. Um, so that's definitely the, the hope with all this is that the, the yellow pops through. to take a nice little photo of it and send it over to the client and see what she thinks. So really looking back at it, I am happy with the glow, but I also want to make sure that I'm adding enough of those like deeper hues, um, even down to like adding more shadow on the table and things like that. Uh, I don't think I spent enough time creating that warm, like, deep warm kind of thing so anyway we're back and I'm just going to kind of bring this pretty reddish purplish color anywhere I can um, and I really think that's what we need more in 
the sky area. We definitely need more of that even in here, but oh goodness. I gotta say, I'm not doing my best work right now. actually going to switch to using a lower grade of watercolors. Right now that are um, just as rich in color. So we're going to take our burnt sienna. We're going to add a nice like fuchsia to it, get that brickish color, and then we're going to add a really pretty deep blue. And we're going to come back in and basically start adding that as a wash again. <laughs> So we have literally just deepened it all, and I think it's way closer to what I was trying to accomplish than before. <laughs> 